Hi, if you've already watched one of my other core practical videos, I'm really glad you found it useful enough to click play on this one. But you can skip the first minute, so scroll along. If you haven't zoomed forward, welcome to this core practical video. It's part of a series of videos which I'm hoping will help you to focus on each of the Edexcel Physics GCSE core practicals. For double science students, you only need seven out of the eight, so please skip number four, thermal energy. This is only for the triple scientists. Triples, you need all eight. Assessment of practical work is included as part of the final exams. A minimum of 15% of the total marks must be allocated to questions related to these core practicals. So, I hope you find the video useful and I hope it helps you to revise the experiment that you will have done in your lessons. In the third core practical, we investigate refraction in rectangular glass blocks in terms of the interaction of the electromagnetic waves with matter. Edexcel's description is that a light source with a grating must be used to produce a beam of light, which must then be used to investigate the effect of refraction using a glass block. An appreciation of the interaction of the light ray with the glass block and the effect of changing the medium on the light ray, moving towards and away from the normal, must be included. We start this experiment by drawing around a glass block. This means that I'll always be able to be sure I can place it back in exactly the same position. I also need to use a ray box with a single slit grating. The ray box gets hot enough to cause a burn, so I'll have to be careful when I'm handling it. Next, I need to accurately add a normal line this needs to be added at 90 degrees to the surface of the glass block. You'll see I'm very carefully marking that out to make sure I get it exactly right. Now to prepare for my results, I am going to pre-draw three angles of incidence. And I'm going to draw those at 20 degrees, 40 degrees and 60 degrees to this normal line. The angle of incidence is the angle that's made between the incident ray of light and the normal line. So 20 degrees, 40 degrees and 60 degrees will be the three angles of incidence that I'll use for my results. Here is a single set of results taken without a predetermined angle of incidence. Notice the light is refracted but it's also reflected and this happens at that first surface of the glass block. So using neat crosses to mark the paths of light I could then move the glass block out the way and draw in where the light has been. Notice I, the angle of incidence, should equal the angle of reflection at that first surface. So I'm going to draw that in to have a look at my accuracy. And you'll see when I measure them that my results are about two degrees out. By using a sharp pencil, which I tried to do, but a narrower beam of light could make it more accurate. Now you can see I'm drawing in the rays of light using the little crosses that I made to mark where the paths were. And then I can join up to mark where the light was moving through the glass block. Now there are two refractions actually happening here. The first from air to glass and the second from glass to air. So you saw me draw in that second normal line for that second refraction. There's the first angle of incidence and angle of refraction and the second angle of incidence and angle of refraction. And there's that angle of reflection added in. So with my measurements done, 
you can see I've got an error of plus or minus two degrees from the angle of incidence compared with the angle of reflection at the first surface. Law of reflection is that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection should be the same and minus two degrees out. You can see the angle of incidence of the light that's moving through the air towards the glass at 57 degrees. When it hits the glass block, you can see that the light has been refracted at the boundary. It's changed direction as it's slowed down, and its direction has changed towards the normal line, reducing the angle to 33 degrees. That's the angle of refraction from the boundary of air to glass. But there are two refractions here. The first was air to glass, and at the top we see the refraction from glass to air. This second refraction here, the angle of incidence, is 33 degrees. And as the light speeds up from the glass back out into the air, the angle increases to 59 degrees. The angle of refraction is 59 degrees, which is away from the normal line. One last thing to notice is how the original angle of incidence and the final angle of refraction those two rays of light are parallel to one another. So let's first notice that if the angle of incidence is at zero degrees, i.e. along the normal line, there's no change of direction of the light, only a change of speed. Now using my preset angles of incidence, you can see me marking neatly with little crosses where those angles of refraction are. So there's 20 degrees, and I repeat for 40 degrees, and finally I repeat for 60 degrees. And my scribbles by the side are just reminding me which crosses go with which angles of incidence. Then I can remove the glass block and I can use the ruler or the edge of my protractor to draw in each path of light accurately. Using my protractor, I can then measure the angles of refraction at that first surface. And then the second refraction, the one that goes from the glass to the air. But before I can measure any angles, I need to draw in the normal line each time, because it's the normal line that I'm measuring to.
So these were my results. So we can see that for air to glass, the angle of refraction is always less than the angle of incidence because the light is bending towards the normal. And when the light is refracted from glass to air, the angle of refraction is always greater than the angle of incidence because the light bends away from the normal. These results can also be shown plotted on a graph. Purely as an extension, I can use Snell's law to get an idea of how accurate my results were, like I used the law of reflection earlier. But you don't need to panic, you don't need to know Snell's law. The law of reflection suggested I had an error of plus or minus 2 degrees from that one result. Using Snell's law and the accepted values for the refractive index of air and the refractive index of glass, I can see I am close to the accepted values, and so I'd consider the data from my experiment with three results to be reliable. So that's the third core practical reviewed, because you know that. Regular, Regular review gets a better grade for you. you. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment. Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs>